Hey guys, welcome back to Spacey's Arcade. Today we're going to look at this really cool Disney innovation called Hollow Tile 4. And there was a short demo that they gave on this, the creator, the innovator, uh, Lanny Smoot. He actually showed this in action. And guys, these tiles are pretty incredible. I haven't seen anything like this before. And it has an absolute groundbreaking impact to the use of VR and of course motion and so far to do motion with VR we've seen a lot of sort of treadmill type applications very big pieces of hardware normally strapped in you know things around you whereas this is just a bunch of these little tiles on the floor that move underneath your feet and effectively keep you in the same position which is incredible. They're also scattered in such a way that they look like they can be sort of added to in a modular fashion and therefore suit any sort of style of floor layout that you might have. Now of course this is just an innovation at this point in time it's not commercially released but guys this is a peak I think into the future and certainly it absolutely destroys one of the biggest problems with VR and that of course relates to motion sickness and this doesn't solve it all because lag in VR also can cause a bit of motion sickness and just some people just don't do well with VR full stop but as these headsets get better fidelity as the lag drops down to minuscule amounts and then we add something like the hollow tile floor to the equation now you've got full movement you can walk potentially run on the spot in your house. You don't have that big piece of equipment sitting in there. This is actually really groundbreaking. The second thing that's really amazing about this technology is the fact that you can put someone else on the, the, the same floor space and they can move independently to you as the little actuators move under their feet with the tiles that they're on. Furthermore, they show in the demo putting down sort of objects that can actually be moved around uh, on the floor and you can even sit on it they show you sitting on, a, on, a, uh, on an object and being moved around so clearly there's some strength behind these tiles. Now when I had a look at the way that he's moving on the floor it did seem a little unnatural it almost seemed like a treadmill style of feeling was starting under, under his feet just the way that he was moving. And at one point he sort of sort of turned and rolled and came back on his heels a bit. It looked like he was just a little bit off balance. Now clearly they can sort out all these things in software guys over time and this will just could get better and better. I think it's an early stage of the technology but it shows the absolute potential. It might feel a little weird perhaps when you're actually using it. Um, it didn't seem like they were just sort of getting up and walking and running and you know very, very naturally. However guys, all of this technology, outside of the fact that it's just awesome for gaming VR and VR in general, uh, especially VR type of experience guys that we have not had a lot of um, really to date in relation to being able to walk around and experience things. Now of course we have just seen, and you would have seen this on the channel, uh, the arcade time capsule which has gained a huge amount of attention guys, got over 90,000 views on that video. Uh, I'll put a link to the video in the, in the description below if you haven't yet seen it. Um, and it, the reason why there's so much interest in that virtual arcade is the realism of it is just sensational. And this sort of technology coupled with that sort of environment allows itself to open up to so many more people who can feel comfortable just hopping on something like the uh, hollow tile floor and walking seamlessly around the arcade guys. Now just imagine that for one minute, just moving around <laughs> in your living room, you know, with full VR, so you're completely in the account, see your surroundings. And it may very well solve the motion side of things for a lot of people. So that's, that's clearly the obvious application and the obvious sort of benefit that this technology brings but what else could it bring guys in a classic arcade environment well I've thought of a couple of things which I think would be pretty damn cool 
So in the arcade guys, when you're walking around, you've got the tall stalls and you've got the little seats in front of the little Astros, the Japanese candy cabs. And if you had this technology, you could actually have both a high stall and a smaller stall just plonked on these tiles uh, behind you. And as you're walking around the arcade, once you get up to one of these stalls, then the software would know and it would be able to move like one of the large stalls behind you. And then you could just go sit down and you'd be sitting on the virtual stall guys. And I think that's possible because, you know, he's sitting on a thing being flung around the place. So I think they could handle it. And perhaps the base of the stalls may not need to be legs. It might need to be flat, but you know what I mean? And the same thing could occur as you walk over to one of the little Japanese candy cabs and you want to play one of those games. You could just go sit down because the tiles would move the little seat behind you and you just sit on the real seat. Now guys, that to me would really <laughs> make you feel like you're really in the arcade and especially being able to sit on you know, one of those tables or one of those tall stalls and just sit there and soak in the ambience of the arcade, which I know a lot of you have done. I know a lot of you just hopped in there, haven't even played a game, and just walk around the arcade just soaking it in. And for me guys, you know, I'd be quite happy to just sit on one of those stalls as well, soak in the ambience and have a beer <laughs> underneath the VR goggles. It's always a challenge. Uh, and just enjoy it. It doesn't stop there, guys, though, because I also thought, okay, well, what's the sort of final frontier in relation to breaking the sort of uh, immersion of being in VR when you're doing something like uh, the arcade time capsule. Well, the funny thing is, is that when you're doing a virtual pinball in VR, you have just one pinball controller. And if you have your own little pinball controller with a lockdown bar, you can make that thing feel really, really nice and you're in VR and you just feel like you're at a machine. And some people, of course, actually have their virtual pin cabs. They stand in front of their pin cabs with their, with their VR headset on and they get their full sensation and feeling of the machine, right? That, that's an awesome part of that experience. But a big problem with video games, which you don't get in pinball, is that controllers, guys, controllers are always completely different. You've got analog type controllers, you've got spinners, you've got steering wheels, you've got two-way, four-way, eight-way, you know, different button configurations and all sorts, right? So if we take the same uh, concept of being able to move hardware around the individual using these hollow tile floor, then can you imagine if you actually set up around yourself a whole load of controllers, right? In a circle around you. And what happened would be is the software would detect you coming up to a certain game and it's right, okay, you're coming up to a game with a trackball and a couple of buttons, right? And you've got a trackball with some buttons as part of your hardware. That hardware spins around, comes forward to you, or you sort of move around under the tiles in front of it. And when you put place your hands down, guys, your hands are aligned with the cabinet on the screen in VR, and now you have full control immersion with the right controls. A trackball is under your hand, guys. <laughs> you walk over to another machine, come over here, and a little two-way joystick is in your hands. Right? It's just, seriously, this could be amazing. Now, this is, of course, <clears throat> a long way off, but guys, VR is really here to stay. It's gonna kick off, I think, this year in 2024. Uh, especially with the Apple Vision Pro coming out, even though it's so expensive, it's just going to push it out. The MetaQuest 3, of course, is very, very popular. See the link in the description below, guys, to grab yours if you haven't got one. Now's the time to get into VR. If you don't, if you don't want to get into VR now, then I would just seriously watch this space and watch what's happening and developing and get a bit of a feel for what you're doing. If you haven't experienced, guys, you've got to get yourself in it. Even just, even if a friend has it and just see what it's like, guys, because the hype is real. And when you're in, when you look around your room where you are now, that's what it's like when you're in VR. It's not like this on a 2D screen. So guys, we're gonna spend a lot more uh, time covering VR on this channel as we go forward. We're still gonna mix in <clears throat> some of the uh, hardware that I have and the original arcade stuff as well, but there will be a lot of VR content. I really hope you're going to enjoy it as we go forward. Please like and subscribe.
give me any uh, in the comments below anything that you want to see me do in VR. One of the things I will be doing in the arcade time capsule is we'll be playing some games. I've got that lined up. And I've got some other things lined up as well. All coming out. Heaps of videos as you can see guys. Love to see you. Uh, continue to watch the channel. And until next time, ciao for now. Thank <laughs> you.